Hey guys and welcome back to the freaking channel and or just like welcome to the channel in general. It is I, Julianne, and today we are just coming in with a voiceover, which is super uncommon for me. Normally I like to bless you suckers with my lovely face, but today we are doing a very relaxy kind of vlog. I had a shop update maybe a couple weeks ago, and in this vlog we're just gonna be packing a lot of those orders in real time. We're gonna be switching between relaxy music and a little bit of a Q&A. So yeah, if you guys are here just to chill, it's gonna be a really long one. Where we're just gonna be hanging out and relaxing together so make sure you have a warm beverage and like a snack because i don't know i always like having a snack around and let's get on with the first cue actually before we get started with the first cue i'd like to first address that you'll probably be able to hear a lot of like the thunder and rain noise in the background for those of you who know i live in california and so this like kind of storm situation doesn't really happen very often for me so i'm trying to savor the fall moment so that's like one thing I'm gonna address first. The second thing is I am very grateful to all of those who submitted cues for me to A, because there is nothing more daunting as like a small creator than to like attempt a Q&A and then you ask people like, do you have any questions for me? And like, no one has questions for you, you know? No one cares. So I'm very grateful that some of you guys do care or were just like, I don't know, entertaining me. But yeah, thanks for making this video work. <laughs> Such an embarrassing thing to admit, but you know, we keep it real. We keep it real here. Anyway, let's get started with the first question. And that is going to be any tips for starting your art business and how to promote your shop on social media? Oh man, that is a big old question. I feel like I could spend days talking about that. But they're like two different scopes, right? It kind of feels like the same thing, but it's not. One of them is marketing and one of them is starting up an entire business. Like each one of these topics, I feel like I can make entire video series for, but um, I don't know. I, I guess I'll just like try to tackle an aspect of it. So let's say this is for someone with no art account. First, what you would do is just post as much as possible and do not focus on the numbers. I would just be focusing on developing your style and brand. All of that that will happen organically. It's just you need to just put yourself out there and see where it goes. However, if you're like the type of person that already knows exactly what you want from your brand and your art business, then just go ahead and make sure that all that branding is really clear in the first few posts. And then go really, really heavy into reels. Right now, Instagram is really pushing that and I know everyone says that, but it's true. It is the best way to get the most amount of eyeballs on your brand. And when you're getting started and even when you're further along in the process, you are just trying to get as many people to see your stuff as possible to like garner an audience that will love you. And I know that seems really annoying because for me, I'm like really scared of posting a lot because I don't want people to think I'm annoying and unfollow me. However, that's like kind of dumb for me to think because honestly your reels and your posts aren't really hitting your audience that often, like the people who follow you. They are trying to get other people who don't follow you to look at your Instagram through reels especially. And so it's just like the best way to get new eyeballs on your stuff. So you should be trying to post reels as much as possible just to cast that net as wide as possible. Our second question, I actually got asked this question quite a bit or just like various different versions of this question. And it is, what were your biggest struggles starting a business while working full-time or part-time? 
I'm curious if you're still balancing both or if you've decided to commit full time into your business. And the truth of the matter is, I do do this full time. It is an absolute blessing and I've been a full time artist for the past two years. And I am one of those artists that traded in a 9 to 5 to work 24 7. And I know a lot of people say that and it sounds unreal, but it's true. You do work a lot more, but the thing is that this is the dream job, so you enjoy it a lot more too. Like, you guys definitely work gnarlier jobs than I do. I am not saying that being a creative is so difficult, but it, it really is just like a ton of work and you determine your work schedule, but that really means that you just end up working all the time. Especially as an artist, especially since we all have to be like part social media, like marketing manager as well. So you're also like creating content, but on top of that, your content has to be made from art, which takes a lot of time. And then there's like the whole shop aspect, which is like a whole nother thing. So you have to be an expert on e-commerce as well. And then also like low key an accountant and also like a project manager. It's, it's just a lot, it's a ton, but I love it so, so much and I'm so grateful. Before I was doing this though, I was a creative producer at Netflix and that was also like a very, very fun job, but just the workflow was very different. And also when I was like, when I logged off, I was logged off. And before that, I worked at a restaurant while also being a medical illustrator while also trying to start up this small business. So it is a grind. It is an absolute grind, but it is so worth it once you're able to do this full time. So my biggest struggle back in those days was time management. Of course, that's kind of just like a given and kind of like a nothing answer. However, specifically for me, it was prioritization. When you're working a full-time or part-time job, the limiting factor is really your time and your energy. And so prioritization becomes just incredibly important. For me, I had a really, really hard time figuring out what was the most important task on my task list. So I would have this like giant list of all the things I needed to do in order to boost my business and get it off the ground. And I just like couldn't figure out what was most important at the time to just get it on its legs. And because I couldn't figure out what was most important, I was doing all these other tasks that wasn't really moving the needle. So I was working a lot more and using a lot more energy that I didn't have to. And also saying a lot more of like no to opportunities I really wanted to do, like hanging out with my friends. Of course I hung out with my friends. And of course I still played sports and I did all these other things, but I didn't get to do it as much as I would have liked to because I was not able to move the needle with my business because I couldn't prioritize anything. So from like that entire experience, I learned how to like number all my tasks, like one, two, and three are gonna be the ones that move the needle. And even though it might not be the most fun or the cutest part of running a small business, it is the most important that will get it off the ground so I don't have to work this much or I don't have to work my full-time or part-time job anymore. It was so much work and I look back on that time kind of fondly because I'm low-key impressed with how dedicated I was. And I wouldn't have done it any other way. I feel like some people tell you to just like jump off the cliff, just start the small business with no backup plan. But I'm very much a person where I need the security of knowing that my bills are gonna get paid. I truly believe that you can do both and you can find the time for both. Unless you're a person with like great means, like keep your full-time or part-time job until things look financially feasible. Again, I was like pushed off of that cliff because I was laid off during like the whole tech meltdown. And I can't say that lit a fire underneath me. I, it kind of just like gave me severe anxiety and depression. So yeah, keep your full or part-time job until it is reasonable for you to quit and go full-time with your small business. Microphone should be faced in front of me and pointed at me, I think. That seems like a good idea. I'm still dealing with this like allergic reaction. I don't know when my eyes will go back to normal, but I would just like to wake up one day and like look like myself again. That would be really nice. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. I have printed out all of the packing slips for the domestic orders. Yesterday, I printed out all the international orders and I don't know where I've left them at the moment, but you know, I really hope I find them because it's kind of crucial information. <laughs> I just put these out on basic normal paper and I put them back and forth and also at half the size so that we can save as much paper as possible. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna staple these real quick. I don't know why I need to do this on camera. I actually just kind of forgot to do it. So now that they're stapled, I'm just gonna go through them and I'm going to highlight all the ones that have multiples of each item. Because I do print them at half the size, the font is like a little bit smaller. If like I can recognize what the item is, but sometimes I'll like miss the quantity because people order multiples of things to which I'm very grateful for, thank you so much. So I'm just gonna go through that and mark up all the multiples and then we're gonna start processing these orders. There's a lot of them. I think we're doing about 115 today. Yeah, that's what we're doing today, 115 orders. 
and I don't have enough counter space for that. So we're gonna have to start putting orders on the floor and then process from there. So yeah. I feel like a teacher grading papers. I just thought I imagine they're like they're just shuffling through papers and then just like marking it up real quick, just circling everything that's wrong. Our next question is how do you deal with creative blocks and how do you find inspiration for new themes? And this is an excellent question because it is actually going to be the theme of the next video that's coming out after this one. That video will be all about how I deal with art block. I think I have like five to six different tips, but today I'll just talk about the one that I feel like has made the biggest impact in my life. And that is having hobbies that you love outside of art. I cannot tell you how important this is, especially, well, I guess how important it is to me. A big part of my inspiration process and like not burning out is just being able to not think about art, having space away from it. Because the more I force an idea, the worse it gets and the more frustrated I get and then I get all anxious and that is so bad. Like a happy artist is a productive artist. I absolutely hate this like romanticization of like the tortured artist. It just isn't true. When you are depressed, you just don't want to do anything. So it doesn't make sense that all of a sudden, when you're depressed as an artist, you're drawing all the time to get your emotions out. Maybe that's how it works for some people, but for the most part, depression means you don't do anything. So basically, I'm just trying to get my mind off of things and let my brain do the work in the background. Like, I don't want to be actively thinking about things. I want to be passively thinking about things. And to do that, the hobbies that are the furthest away or like the most different from art are the most helpful. And in my case, that is playing sports because when you're playing sports, you literally just, you don't think about anything in your head. It's just completely blank and you're just running around and you're releasing endorphins, so you're super happy. And by the time you get back to your, like your drawing pad or your sketchbook, all of a sudden you're just like in a better place. Your mind is more clear and you can get some ideas down. I am currently a pickleball fiend and I know a lot of people make fun of me about that because it's like a sport for senior citizens and it totally is. Some of the best players out there are senior citizens. Don't disrespect your elderly. But it's also just like a really fun, fast paced game that is easy on your joints. I was previously a pretty decent tennis player and I don't know, I just like really hurt my body playing tennis because it's so aggressive on your knees and on your shoulders. So I've switched to pickleball and it's just so much more fun. I'm also a huge foodie so when I don't know what to draw or I'm getting really frustrated when it comes to art or my next launch I just go out and eat good food because when I'm eating good food my mind is completely blank and I just feel happy that's it it's just like feelings of happy is just radiating my brain I'm also a little bit of a cinephile I wouldn't say like an I'm an absolute expert or like a critic when it comes to movies and tv and everybody loves watching movies and 
TV, but I like coming at it a, a little bit more of a snobby perspective. I love thinking critically when it comes to that kind of art, and I I don't know, it just like makes me really happy. I even like watch a lot of like analysis videos on YouTube. Some of my favorite podcasts are like movie and TV podcasts. So yeah, I'm like a little bit of an insufferable kind of person. <laughs> And I feel like we kind of tackled the next question too, which is how do you find time for all your hobbies? And I find time for them because it's part of my creative process. I think they are productive. So it doesn't feel bad when I go out and play pickleball every day or I stop and watch a movie because it's just, an important part. If I don't do that, I go crazy. And no, nobody wants that. You don't, you don't want to see that. I'm already a mess as it is. Also, it helps that like my main squeeze of a hobby right now is pickleball and it's good for your health. So I feel like extra productive about that. And like maybe this is TMI, but I'm like y yoked right now, dude. I'm like fitter than ever. And it sounds stupid because again, pickleball is a elderly sport, but you're squatted the entire time. It's all like really fast, quick movements and you're constantly doing it. So you sweat a ton. Okay, my butt is looking perky. My tummy's looking tight. I recommend. Our next question is, what product or item did you assume was going to sell less but ended up selling out or is a bestseller on your shop? And basically that is anything with my original characters on them, the little sprout guys that I've been obsessed with. I kind of just started drawing these guys cause it was really fun and I really enjoyed doodling them. But then I ended up just like getting really attached and I created this entire storyline in my head. I started thinking about like the world that they would live in, their like little jobs and their everyday lives. And I don't know, I'm very, very attached to them and I ended up just making products featuring them because because I wanted them. I really didn't think anyone would buy them. I just kind of wanted to start introducing the characters and like kind of warming people up to the idea. But right when I introduced them, people started buying them like right away. And now a lot of the sticker sheets or stickers featuring them are either my bestseller or have sold out in the past, which is just incredibly rewarding because again, I am so attached to these characters and I really do want to eventually pivot the shop to be featuring them a lot more heavily with like some original art prints or some more merch featuring them just because I grew up loving Sanrio so much and Pokemon so much and I wanted to have my own version of them and I don't know it feels like there is something there for these guys and I'm just incredibly grateful and blown away that anyone likes them or is purchasing anything with them on it so that has been incredibly rewarding and a very, very lovely surprise. And of course, I am never going to stop making fan art. I am a huge, huge nerd at heart. But again, it is like so incredibly rewarding to know that people like my art and not just the popular characters that I'm drawing. <laughs> Our next question is what type of merch have you not made yet that you would be excited to make in the future? And actually right underneath that is, are you ever gonna make anything outside of sticker sheets? 
that's funny. Yes, I am gonna make things outside of sticker sheets, prints, and stickers. And namely, number one on that to-do list is washi tape, which will be coming out in 2024 as early as possible. I am working on that right now. And I know I've been saying I've been working on it for a really long time, but it's just that I get so distracted by making sticker sheets because I really do love making them. And I don't know, it's just, I get really daunted by making a new product, but I am very excited to release sticker sheets. Oh my God, see, what a, what a slip. I'm very excited to release washi tape. Oh my God. But the thing is that it's taking a while because I really want to find the right manufacturer. Like I am very, very picky about the type of washi tape that I like to use. Sometimes the texture is really weird. Sometimes the like the stick quality is really weird. So I'm really just trying to find the correct type of manufacturer. And also I need to get started on those designs. Not started, not started. I have the designs or I have them in my head and some of them down, but I will be making washi tape very, very soon. Another product that I am actually researching right now is I want to make bookmarks but not like any bookmarks I want to make specifically like magnetic ones and I don't want to make them from home I've seen videos of people making them from home I want to find a manufacturer because I have a very specific vision in my head it looks a little different than the ones that have gotten really popular on TikTok but I, I am also very very excited about that and I think that is it on the front. I don't really want to make enamel pins because enamel pins are very annoying. And personally, I don't really use them too much. And also keychains, because I don't know, I only have like one keychain. I can't imagine people are buying like a ton of keychains all the time. But that being said, I also want to make like a limited run of like really cute, like, I don't know, like a hoodie, not a hoodie, maybe like a, like a crew neck. I want to make like some sort of sweater with my original characters, like the little sprouts on them. And I also want to make a limited run of tote bags with the sprouts on them. And also I am looking into plushies of my little sprouts. I need to see like if there is actually any market for that, if anyone would buy plushies of my little sprouts. So I'm going to be trying to like, I don't know, market them a little bit more and see where it goes. But if I'm doing a limited run, I might make like 30 of them. And then most of it, it's just going to be like for my pleasure to keep plushies of my characters on my own bed or my own couch. <laughs> So I kind of deemed it as a personal project, not really something to make money with. But yeah, those are all the products on the horizon. I have some other ones like in mind, like maybe I want to make a mouse pad, but that is more like a, it's like more of like an inkling right now. It's kind of far out into the future. Maybe you can feel the pressure that I've been living on I can say that it's been on my mind But I'm moving along So Next up, we have how much time do you recommend slash spend on prepping for a monthly or seasonal drop in? <laughs> um, I don't know what I would recommend to you. I would recommend you not spend as much time as I do. I spend a shit ton of time on my drops. Um, lately, it's been a lot better because now I have like a content manager, I guess he manages all my YouTube and Instagram content and also helps me organize for my shop updates. Before I would want to have shop updates at certain times and I would just like keep forgetting about them and I would meander and take a million years on tasks that shouldn't take a million years. And that would end up making me just like skip the update altogether. Like I was very irresponsible before, but now I'm a lot more on task and I would say to produce all the stuff, like to create the ideas and draw all the stuff I want to make. It takes me like, maybe two weeks, two and a half weeks of uninterrupted work. So in reality, it's probably a little bit longer. And maybe I want like a week and a half to two weeks of marketing up before the drop. So right now it takes me maybe a month and a half before a shop update to really prepare for it. And I think I can cut that down by a lot, like maybe even half. 
if I like figure out how to hire help properly because right now I'm wasting a lot of time doing stuff that other people can do. Like I should be specialized in creating like the marketing content and the ideas and drawing. I shouldn't be sitting there rounding corners of a thank you card because that shit takes a long time. Or even like cutting my own stickers. I still cut a lot of my stickers from home, just like not the waterproof ones. And literally anyone can do that. I don't know why I'm spending like entire days doing that myself in order to prep for an update. So next year I'm really gonna be working on like trying to find someone to help me, like a personal assistant to do all the stuff that I shouldn't be doing myself. But yeah, that is how much I spend right now. And that is only making sticker sheets, stickers, and prints, which is pretty easy stuff and really fast turnaround time. I don't know how long it's gonna start taking me when I wanna produce like more intense things like the sweaters and tote bags I was talking about. Especially since I wanna get all the materials right, especially for the sweater, because it's mostly for me. Like I want a nice giant cozy sweater to wear. So it's gonna take a really long time to source correctly and also find the right manufacturer. And especially if I wanna do things ethically, it's gonna be expensive. So yeah, it probably will take me longer in the future, but I don't know. We're, we're gonna try to balance things. This, this will definitely change in the future. Our next question goes, my question for you is what tips do you have for confidence in yourself as a person and an art business owner and also confidence in your art? <gasps> oh my God, that was a really long sentence to read. Well, I actually don't know if I have a ton of confidence just like as is and all those things. My policy is I'm kind of just going with the flow. I say yes to almost anything and it's mostly from a fear of missing out, which is, I know sounds kind of stupid, but I don't know. I would just much rather be embarrassed or make a fool of myself for trying something than to like just miss out on it. It's not like I don't have a ton of insecurities or I don't get jealous from time to time. I don't think I'm a particularly confident person. I'm just, I'm just doing it, you know? And I just, I'm just doing it because I'm scared that I will never get to do it again. Which is like so not like the cute Instagram girly, like, I don't know, mindset of abundance. I have like the opposite of that. I'm constantly scared that I'm gonna be missing out on something and I'll just lose it forever. So I just go for anything and everything and I try to say yes as much as possible. So it's not exactly confidence. It's just, I don't have any other tool in my belt. We're just going with it, folks. I am by no means free of insecurity. I am constantly questioning whether or not I am good enough to be an artist or to call myself an artist. And then there's all those other things that girls have to worry about. If I'm pretty enough, am I smart enough? Am I funny? Do people like me? It's like, of course I have all of those things, but I don't know. I can only ever be me in this life and there's nothing else I'd rather do than to be an artist. So I just, you just have to do it. It leaves you very little choice when you think about it that way. And it might be an annoying answer. It's very like Nike, just do it. But I don't, I don't know. I feel like if I just stay in the mindset of I have no other choice, then it just makes things a lot easier for me. I don't know if I answered the question, but that that is it. That is the answer. <laughs> Thank you.
Ooh, an anime-related question. Do you like Shinkai's animes? Your name, Suzume. And I think he also did Weathering With You. I love Weathering With You. It is possibly, not, it's not my favorite movie of all time, but it is in the top five. That movie blew my socks off. The animation, the art is incredible. It reminds me of Ghibli, but like, not that Ghibli isn't for adults, but it, it is a more grown up version of it, especially since it's more narrative focused. A lot of the magic of Ghibli is that they're very focused on establishing the world and just like kind of enjoying yourself through the movie. You're kind of just moving along through time. You're not really always following a very strict narrative. Shinkai's movies are more traditional in terms of like following a direct narrative and they're just beautiful and whimsical and I have never not cried watching one of his movies. Specifically Your Name, I cried so many times and anytime I rewatch it, I cry every single time. I don't feel the same about Suzume and Weathering With You. I think they are very good movies. I just don't think it really captures the same kind of magic that Your Name captured, but still great. I think Shinkai is incredible. So we are now all done packing the domestic orders for now and we're gonna move on to the international untracked orders which is this The answer to this next question is real short and sweet. I don't know if you ever answered already, but how did you come up with the name Peppercut? Well, for one, I was creating a stationary brand, so I wanted it related to stationary or paper or supplies of some sort in some kind of way. Then I also wanted it to be three syllables because my name and everyone else's name in my family is three syllables. So I kind of just like the, I don't know. I like the way it sounds when names are three syllables, like Sanrio, Peppercut, perfect. So I came up with the name Paper Cut, but then that just sounded too harsh and was already something that existed. So I wanted to soften it a little bit. And I've also always wanted to name a pet Pepper because I just think it's cute. Like I was obsessed with Blue's Clues growing up. So there was Mr. Salt and Mrs. Pepper and their kid Paprika. So I don't know. I just really liked the idea of the name Pepper. I liked Paper Cut, the concept. I liked the three syllables. And so I just combined them into Pepper Cut. And I still really like the name to this day.
then I think we'll just take one more. This will be the last question of this video because it's probably already stupid long. What cons are you planning on going to in 2024? I can't order online, so I love buying from you at cons. Also love the con reviews and stuff. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. I really don't know what I'm doing when it comes to those like con vlogs. I'm kind of just trying to give my own like perspective on things because I don't think I do anything particularly right. I don't think there is a right way to do it. But I, I don't know, I'm just doing my best. So thank you so much for enjoying those. So for 2024 and actually the latter half of 2023, conventions have been having a really hard time like getting out their applications on time or even like sifting through them on time. So we don't really know where we're going until super last minute, which is an aspect of like the convention lifestyle. I don't think a lot of people talk about enough that it is very, very last minute all the time. You have to change your plans a lot if you wanna do this full time. Also everything costs a lot more because you're buying things last minute like your flight or your hotel, which is like price gouged through the roof when you buy last minute. So I don't really know too much about my schedule yet. I'm still waiting to hear back from a lot of different conventions, but I don't think I'm doing anything in January, but in February I have MegaCon, which is in Orlando. I also have KatsuCon and Fan Expo Vancouver. I'm gonna redeem myself with Vancouver and KatsuCon is gonna be a new convention for me. I think that is in DC. So I'll be doing all of that in February. I'll also be doing WonderCon in March and Anime Detour in Minneapolis. That'll be my first time going to Minneapolis. So if you're there and you, I don't know, if you wanna come hang out, please come hang out with me. I need to know the lay of the land. I need to know where the good food is at. And yeah, I think that's all I know so far for this year. Oh, also I have Friend Fest, which is in March. That's a local kind of market, I think. It is done by SG Maid. So if you're in the Bay Area and you wanna come hang out in March, that's what I'll be doing. And I'll try to do a better job this year of posting when I'm gonna be at conventions. Like this past year, I feel like I've just like been showing up and then people come by my table and are like, oh my God, I didn't know you were gonna be here. And honestly, I didn't either. So I'll do a better job this next year. And yeah, then we'll just wrap it up right there. Thank you so, so much for watching my video. It really means the whole freaking world to me. And it's literally incredible if you made it to this point. Like, good job. It was a marathon. I didn't get a chance to get through all the questions. I think we only answered like seven or eight of them. But I think I'll just save them for another time if you guys want another video like this because it was kind of fun. I enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below what you guys want to see. If you guys want to see another one of these videos. Again, next week's video is going to be a how to beat art block, I believe. And yeah, check out the description box below if you want to check out like any of my shop stuff or my social media. It's all there. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> um, I don't know how to end this, so bye. All right, we are all done and we're gonna head over to the post office to get these babies shipped out.